channel welcome back to a brand new renovation vlog house updates video we're talking all things home related today i'm going to give you a good walk through of everything that we have done so far with the extension plans the basement plans where we are at today our plans moving forward all of that good stuff I also take you back to when we were clearing out our old kind of conservatory extension parts of the building which sneak peek for what's to come in this video is now no longer there. So we did a big clear out of that which I included within this footage as well. So if you're a fan of the time lapses, the clear outs, the organising, hopefully you're going to love this video. I do also have some new bits I bought the other day from Dunelm. I was going to do a separate video but I thought I'd just include it within this video. I think that's the front door, one second. Uh, but yeah, before I get on to just getting stuff done today, it's just gonna be a major organized day and got quite a bit of work to do. But anyway, aside from that, keeping myself hydrated for the day with my new Air Up bottle, this is incredible. If you have yet to have seen this, I personally had already seen it, I'd heard about it, I'd wanted to try it out. Air Up reached out to me and wanted to work with me on today's video. So firstly, thank you to them, but also, Secondly, I was so intrigued to try it out and was going to purchase it anyway. I talked to Tom about this and he was like, oh, we need to try that. And it's the most bizarre concept that I thought, oh yeah, it's going to be one of these gimmicks. It's incredible. So let me just talk to you about firstly how it actually works and what it is. So you can get different colours. You can pick and choose which um, colour you want for your bottle. I just went for the, I think it's called Pearl uh, White basically clear bottle and I went for the black lid. You fill it with tap water or you can put sparkling water in if you wanted to and then you get these little pods. This one that I currently have on the go is tangerine. That's what it looks like without the pod. Pop the pod on and then when it's in the down position like so you can drink. It tastes like normal water. Lift the pod up, drink, I'm drinking tangerine flavored water. How does that work? Oh God, it, it, it almost makes me feel a bit funny, the fact that I my brain is working in a different way. Drinking tap water so there's no sugar, no additives, nothing that you're putting within your body other than tap water. They're vegan, you know, there's no sugar or additives or anything onto these pods. It's just purely science sensual science with how your senses work together with the drinking motion and the smelling it makes you feel like you're drinking flavored water it's honestly incredible this is another one that i've already tried myself and tom was trying a few last night and honestly i probably drank a few liters of water just by trying out the pods because it just i couldn't get my, my head around it it's honestly amazing so the cucumber pod is probably my favorite so far of the two tangerine cucumber and i also got this one which i feel like it's going to be nice again from the warmer months basil lemon the bottle itself is obviously reusable each pod will flavor at least sort of five liters of water so you've got about eight refills worth per pod especially if you're someone that struggles to drink water just plain still water this is the perfect solution for you i'll leave the link in the description box i've already even just since filming this part of the video <laughs> drunk that much water i just know i'm gonna get through several of these a day which is what you need for good hair good skin good nails i'm actually going to take you downstairs into the kitchen i've got a bit of cleaning up to do first and then i'm going to throw it back to from before we started taking down the extension standing underneath the lights look into each other's eyes tired snowflakes are coming down collapse into water when they hit the ground i hear the sound empty streets yesterday has gone to sleep so i had this arrived the other day from a brand called purdy and fig i thought i would give it a try today seeing as though i've just kind of unloaded the dishwasher tidied up a little bit i just need to wipe down all the surfaces and this is a concept which i thought sounded quite fun it lift the lid on a fresh approach to cleaning so it's a bit more environmentally friendly in that you essentially get a reusable bottle counter clean bottle for life 
for multi-surface cleaning. And then you get these essentially little shots of antibacterial products. Got three shots to try, of which this one might be quite nice for spring balancing, floral grounding, vetiver. And then the other one that I've got is uplifting citrus. Oh yeah, I think this one for the kitchen will be quite nice. You get a little funnel to pop in here so you don't spill it. And then you just fill it up with tap water. Ooh. Oh, okay, so yeah, the liquid's thicker, you do. I mean, it smells amazing. Then you can just simply recycle this little glass bottle, a little microfiber cloth as well, and also an expiration date for the product and the product information. You get 230 sprays per bottle, estimated one month usage. Thanks to them for sending me that. Google, play Capital FM. Streaming Capital UK from Global Player. I know it's nothing new, but it's so good to see you. We do this every day, and I'm still so amazed by you. So hold. So now I just wanted to run you through where we are at with the house. Firstly with the garden, which clearly needs a lot of TLC, especially after the storms. We've got a few fence panels down. The builders out there, it is just a building site, so it's definitely on the back burner until the renovations are complete. But we're starting with down in the basement. We've had some drains fitted at the bottom of the stairs, which we didn't have before, which means it's ideal for when it rains or any water gets down there. We've had many, many deliveries of this mixture which gets mixed up into the concrete to be poured down into the basement along the edges where we are underpinning the full lot. So inside the basement, we've seen big changes with one of the walls that's been removed, ready to be built back up to create a bathroom in there and of course utility room in this chamber too. Then all of the rubble and the ground that has been dug out from the basement has been wheelbarrowed to the front of our property ready for what we call the grabber truck, our new best friend because he is here a lot to come and take away all of the waste because we have so much coming out of the basement especially as we are now um, underpinning and therefore we can go down a lot deeper to get loads more headroom height just means that there is a lot of waste so yeah these grab hire trucks have been making regular appearances at our house so you may be able to hear some background music you may also be able to hear that the builders are currently on the top of this roof in here so if you hear any banging or music or anything like that please do just bear with but this is the old what they classed as the conservatory it's kind of like an add-on extension to the property we just keep these open the whole time we've been using this predominantly as a storage room and as you can see there is lots of stuff within here that all needs to be gone by tonight because I believe tomorrow the builders are ripping this down which is very exciting but equally scary because we're going to have a big exposed section within the property probably for the next however many months <laughs> so um, it will obviously be secured at night and everything but it's a little scary seeing it like that. So anyway, we have all of this sort of section and the back room which we'll have intact for a while which we're gonna use to store a lot of the stuff within here. 
in that back room and some of the bits we can take upstairs as well and sort of put them in their homes these drawers are completely full so i am going to have a good sort out and organize of everything keep what we need to donate what we don't we've got all our shoes here as well within these shoe cabinets boxes and shoe shelves so again lots of clearing and organizing to do today keep bag always on the go which I'm gonna use these IKEA bags which are so handy for storage I've got, actually got loads of IKEA bags like this and some clear ones as well so I'm gonna use these to put all the bits in that I know I'm gonna keep either allocate them to a certain room or just pop them in the back room or kitchen or wherever for now um, and then I've also always got a bin pile on the go and also a donate pile which I have this box which is a little bit scuffed so I'm actually just going to use it as a donation box. Pop the bits in, take them to charity. If there is anything like little bric-a-brac items that I don't need or uh, don't want any more then I'm just going to pop them in there. Do you recall when we were young Running from all things at once Without thinking twice And I knew it would catch up and that we would be the ones left behind The stories I've been told They never seem to lead my mind Ooh, On this road that I am on I gotta stay here for some time Tom's rushing out the door, thanks for your help. We have managed to clear it, we had to just do it a lot quicker than expected, seeing as though, as you can probably tell, they are coming through. There's stuff being thrown out the windows, there's big banging look, it's dropping. So it's also forecast to rain. So this roof is not gonna be on here for much longer. So we just quickly whizzed everything out. I've emptied all the drawers. These are all broken anyway and like damaged. So we're just gonna replace them when we eventually need them. So I'm just gonna keep everything stored in bags for now. So what we've had to do in order to just quickly get everything out of the room is literally do that. So I've just moved it all into this back room and now we have a lot of stuff to sift through and organize, but at least I can kind of do it in my own time and as and when I need to. This was our little laundry station, which I feel like we've still got a little bit of access to. But apart from that, all in here is everything that is storage, stuff that's been within drawers, stuff that's been downstairs, all our Christmas decorations, seasonal decorations, and I think I've got loads of summer clothes over there as well, which I'll probably need to get out soon actually. Suitcases under there. So this is everything, our entire house belongings that aren't already upstairs or in the kitchen. So it's a lot. <laughs> got some other bits stored here as well. We've got my old piano, which I still have no idea where I'm gonna put this. So it's kind of one of those questions on, not whether or not I keep it, because I do really want to keep it, but just where I put it.
okay guys i need your opinion on these prints that i've got from decennia it'll be a bit echoey in here because we're in my bathroom so i've got these prints i've had them ages and i've just not really had a use for them i bought them like before we moved property so we've just not done anything with them really in fact i've just noticed this one needs a bit of a wipe down but I did some Instagram stories getting your guys' opinions, so I'd be interested to see what you guys think here on YouTube. Some of you may have seen this on my Instagram, so apologies for the duplication, but these prints, I'm thinking side by side somewhere up here on this wall, because clearly this wall is very bland and very tall for a bathroom as well. Look, it can't even focus on it because there's that much white kind of just dead space essentially. So that was my first thought was that these two prints kind of side by side, kind of hotel vibes, really like the look of that. But I am worried they're a bit too small. Uh, the other option that I thought about doing maybe was some of that kind of DIY plaster art that you can do or like even if I were to buy a canvas or find an artist that would do something like that, just very minimal, but adds texture to the wall. Maybe even with a thread of like beige running through it to kind of match the tiles. So yes, I need your opinion. I definitely don't want to leave it bare because that was one of the things I mentioned on Instagram thinking, oh, should I leave it bare? But actually it is too bare. It's a big space that definitely needs something. So not a mirror because I do have the mirror on the other side over there, which again, needs a wipe down. You can even tell from here. That was actually me using a non-glass mirror cleaner that I've smudged it, made marks, so I actually need to give it a re-clean. But yeah, let me know what you guys think, whether or not, um, I'll try and, I'm by myself, so I can't really hold for perspective, but something like that side by side. This might even give you kind of a better perspective on size. I've just leaned them against the bath, but yeah, they will obviously go up here on the wall. Uh, but yeah, thoughts and opinions would be much appreciated. I definitely feel like I need help with this decision. Okay, now back to some more home progress. We had all of the ivy removed from the side of the property as much as we loved the look of it. It was getting all within the cavities. It causes damp and moisture. So it really wasn't helping the property. So that was the first thing to come down along with the roof and also the windows of the side extension. So we were just essentially left with an outbuilding because they needed to remove the radiator before they could demolish this. And then from the inside, this is what it looked like boarded up so that we are now safe and secure. And then the demolition began. So we now have no side extension, which is honestly so refreshing to just start with a clean slate. All of this brickwork and everything needed clearing up. But um, you can see from the side of the property into the basement, which is a little bit scary, but it just also puts into perspective how high up the ground level is on this property. So that's something to factor in and bear in mind when doing the extension extension as we're going to have quite a few steps down into the garden. Yet again, another grab hire. So all of this brickwork, all of this old extension, they've come to remove it all. And obviously we have chief cheerleader number one, Barney Boo. He is sat on guard looking and watching on and cheering on the builders, giving them all the moral support that they need. We also then had the start of the foundations to be dug out, which will be a essentially like a big test hole, which the inspector has a look at just to test the soil. The fact that it's like a sand texture is ideal, so that was good news. And then really it's just a case of waiting on the inspector before they can get going. Then down in the basement, we have seen major progress. We've had this drain area put in and filled with a little bit of a gap for when we do eventually get around to tiling this space. Then into the basement rooms, you can see that all of the perimeters have been dug out. This was done in sections, as you can see the numbered sections on the walls. They started with all the number ones, then the twos, then the threes. And the way that they do it is they build a wooden shutter-like um, structure, which is then filled with concrete. So all of the bit underneath the brick and the foundations of the property is dug out 
filled with concrete so therefore added extra support for the middle section to be dug out and therefore more headroom height which is just music to our ears especially as we were struggling to kind of stand up in there well Tom was anyway and then as for Barney he is just doing his thing he is more than happy to help from the sidelines just made myself a nice coffee cheers if you guys are sipping on one too and I thought I would share with you like I mentioned I would the Dunelm bits that I'm honestly so excited that I managed to find Dunelm is impressive did you hear my leg click then <laughs> that wasn't nice all right we're sitting on the floor I've made the executive decision to sit on the floor I do quite like sitting on the floor it's weird Espresso. In fact, no, this is a Starbucks decaf pod. Delish. I love the Starbucks pods. I think I prefer them to the Nespresso pods. Okay, so Dunelm. I've got some amazing finds. The first one is pretty big, so I'll show you this first. £35. I thought it was quite affordable for what it is. And my intention with this is to go in the spare bedroom. Look how nice they've um, styled this up and had it photographed for the image i feel like imagery is everything in terms of packaging if you get a good photography sesh with the product sells it to me so yeah 35 pounds this is a mirror with shelf in a black metal finish so i've bought like an irregular shaped circular one a bit like the one that i've got in my bathroom from zara home i'm still undecided on where to put that yet so i did have a look at putting it in the ensuite bathroom above the sink however didn't look quite right and tom agreed that it just needed maybe something angular something square or rectangular so this is called the london mirror we're limited with space in there so for having things on display we haven't really got any areas for that other than like the window sill prop like a little moisturizer hand cream some oils so that is you could even like put a candle on there so if that fits then that is going on our list of snagging things for builders to do when they're back and once the house is kind of finished i'll just keep that in the bathroom for now also picked up this randomly at five pounds it's a non-stick yorkshire tray we've got the kind of little cupcake sized baking tray or like for muffins but i wanted to get a yorkshire pudding one because tom does the best homemade yorkshire puddings but they're quite small because we have them in those whereas they are designed for yorkshire puddings there was a tray with just four holes of course i went for the one with six i also picked up this for in my bathroom again a little shelf with i'm sure they have these exact ones in bnm in fact none of the bathrooms have anything for toilet rolls anyway so 10 pounds this one was i actually got loads of bits for hosting if we have people stop over i'll take you into the spare bedroom in a minute with some of these bits i've got a little basket on the bed which i thought would look nice with some of these things within just to kind of like i don't know just to have you know i've actually got in there already some toothbrushes that they do so i'll show you them when i get in there but this is um another thing that i got to add to the little basket at three pounds it's a wash mitt and i love the texture of this i think it's really really nice then i also got this body puff again the texture of it looks lovely i think this will look lovely in that shower and this was only two pound fifty and then i've got this little linen bag it's this edited life range it honestly feels like whoever styled this design this might as well just be my best friend because that is exactly how i would style and design it as well so anyway the edited life range so it's up for quite eco-friendly this is a pack or a seven pack of bamboo blend face cloths at five pounds so the fact that it comes in this little drawstring bag i loved but the actual reusable cotton pads you know if anyone's needs to remove their makeup what's this doing they've got some little pads if they need to and then also for the spare bedroom i picked up these linen scented drawer liners you get four in a pack i thought if these are good i might stock up and get some more for all of the drawers that i've got in here i do actually already have some scented drawer liners from zara home so once they die down a bit maybe i'll replace them with the Dunelm ones but this for now i've got four in that spare bedroom which i actually use those drawers for my clothes that's definitely something also on my list of things that needs to be organized and sorted through 
my pajama and my underwear drawer and gym drawer i mean it's a little section within the pajama section so need to sort through all of that um okay i also got these for our kitchen for cleaning <laughs> this is a bamboo and cotton fiber cloth again from the edited life range it's kind of pricey at five pounds but i loved the look of this in terms of look how big this is going to be this is one cloth it's going to be huge and again i'm making my kind of under sink cupboard nice and aesthetically pleasing rather than cluttered and jam-packed full of stuff that looks a mess it's going to look nice and therefore incentivize me to clean more speaking of which i got some more of the antibacterial microfiber cloths the four pack that they do four different textured microfiber cloths that you can categorize into rooms or however you want to use them and then i also got these from the cleaning section we finally have a nice looking dish matic. Oh, these cost, by the way, were £2.50. So they class them as a dish sponge, this one, at £2. And then this one is a dish brush at £2 also. You can pop, just like the dish matics, you can pop the uh, solution within the handle so that it comes out. And again, the fact that it's not clear, you don't see a bright green fairy washing up liquid in there. So it looks lovely, sat out and not garish in colour and yeah how nice are these and two pounds each i mean i'm that's cheaper than a dishmatic right or at least a very similar price point i saw these cute little bunny napkin holders now i only got two and to be honest with you i feel like if i was getting a set i might as well have got more probably should have probably didn't think that through properly these were three pound fifty were they three pound fifty yeah, £3.50 for the set of two. I just thought they were absolutely adorable. Perfect around a little linen napkin for Easter time. Then I got this bowl, which they've got this whole range of beautiful stone crockery type kitchenware. £3.50 this bowl one was. One was? This bowl was. Reactive glaze, therefore each piece is unique. So it's very irregular in shape, a bit distorted, which is what I love. And it's called the Amalfi range. And this is the dip bowl. So good for a little guac dip or something in there. And then another thing to add to my little guest basket in the spare bedroom is this from again the edited life range i feel like all of these bits are really at only one pound it's a pack of 100 little bamboo cotton buds and then i also got this now this i believe is a new scent to dunelm i've got some of their wax melts already but you know their section from the edited life where it's all the kind of wax melts the oils the essential oils the rediffusers candles i love the wax melts in the scent mint and they were four pounds so they have increased the price slightly but this is a new scent they're now four pound fifty but yeah eucalyptus i thought would be lovely either in a kitchen or even in a bathroom i think would be really nice to have eucalyptus i just love how they come as well oh that smells good that honestly smells lovely so it just comes a little set well it comes in like a block that you just break up looks like white chocolate doesn't it it's definitely not white chocolate right, i feel like we should go mm. i was gonna say walk through and tell you where we're at but actually let's go to the spare bedroom instead first where i'm going to share with you my little diy hamper hamper like i've got a guest hamper so this is the basket that i've got on the bed i've just thrown a couple of bits in here for now but i want to switch it up but this is from home sense they're only 5.99 and currently in here is a little primark bed linen spray i'm going to pop this in our bedroom so i'm going to get rid of that in here and then i've got a weighted eye pillow that was from primark as well a little hand towel again from primark and then what's this Oh yeah, this is just from Aesop. It's got, you know when they give you the products, they give you them in these as the carrier bags, which I think is so lovely. But also in here, they included a load of samples. So I always like to put samples in like a guest space. These are, what are these? Exfoliator, cleanser, hydrator so all sorts of bits in there these are the spare toothbrushes that i got a while ago so they're one pound fifty 
and then the other bits that I've just shared with you. Also in the bathroom, that's the mirror that I mentioned that we're gonna switch out and have the shelf hung mirror there and maybe the toilet roll holder there. And then on the sink, we just have this little molten brown in orange and bergamot. And then over this side, a little white company tray. This is from our cat Zara Home, a little molten brown set here. And then these little DIY uh, white company jars I do, the ones from Aldi and then actually nothing is in the shower so I could put that little kind of body puff in here or maybe at some point get a little shelf mind you I don't even know where a little shelf would go because you'd have to either have a corner one or hmm, I mean it rarely gets used this shower so maybe it's best to just keep it keep it empty and clean and nice and easy to clean oh no I did put this in though this little shower squeegee that I got from TK Maxx it's from a brand called Blomus I think it's a really nice matte silicon in the stone color they do have a few other colors I've checked on their website this is like current stock it's hidden quite nicely there so I keep that in there for convenience for as and when I need to wipe down this screen. And then this little wicker bin that I've got in here too is also from Denelm. This was seven pounds, but I got that a while ago. So we have our basket. Now I have to decide what's gonna go in it and where and how to make it look pretty. perched on this window so I'll show you what I've got over here as well this is a white company reed diffuser in the scent chestnut I think I got this from an outlet or discontinued in the sale then we have a Jo Malone fragrance oh I can see it going yellowy on the top that's probably because it's been sat in the sunlight I might actually have to start burning that one because I don't want it to go to waste but anyway, for now, it's sat there alongside these little Jo Malone matches that they do, these black matches, and then they are sat on the other of the little white company trays. These are a set of two, this one and the one in the ensuite bathroom. Anyway, this is the setup I now have on the bed. I decided to put the weighted pillow on the guest towels, and then this little hamper basket is full of goodies. I decided to pop one of the Aesop um, samples just on top so you can see the branding there, but the rest of them are all tucked away there. Toothbrushes and everything laid out. The little cotton pads are back there and then the hand towel there as well. More than anything, just for texture, I quite like that because I will always have a hand towel in the bathroom anyway. And then obviously there's these two towels here as well. So here is my little guest setup. Should you wish to maybe take in so if you have a spare room yourself that you were looking to do something like this for Donnell, is the place to go. Really happy with this. So there we have it. Now we just need some guests. <laughs> Right, I think I'm going to finally bring you guys up to date with everything that's been going on with the house. Let's take you outside and show you the exciting progress we've made. I suppose one huge update, we have a portaloo. Another little update, we've had this pod point installed. Tom currently has an electric Audi and seen as though I've just signed, sealed and delivered for a new Tesla. This will come in handy. We might even get a second one or otherwise just share this because it does fit both of our cars. Yeah, you can get a grant for these with getting an electric car. So I don't think we even paid for that. I think it was free. The Tesla ones, you do have to pay about 400 pounds for though. But yeah, that's another little update onto the side of our property. This sort of alleyway that we have has these gates at the end so we're gonna take the gates to the very front of the property and have the drive at the front as opposed to down here because it's really tight to fit a car down here so yeah that's why that is on the front side of the building ready for when the driveway is done it'll be able to reach both of our cars so we don't actually have builders in today so it feels very quiet but this is usually their entrance into the basement it's all boarded up because they kind of lock it and keep it secure when they're not here so i can't get into the basement to show you that so i'm going to have to do that tomorrow when the builders get here but that is so exciting that basically the whole of the 
basement is now underpinned which means all of the edges are dug out concrete poured in supported ready for the middle section to be dug out which is happening tomorrow they've got a big digger coming for that and then as for this side of the house the old extension has now come down this was quite difficult for them to get out this huge tree well tree trunk which was here before but they managed to get that out and they've also dug out a huge hole down there ready for the building inspector that is coming this week so this is why this team of builders because we've got two separate teams of builders the basement builders and the extension builders this is why they're not here today is because until the inspection comes this week that is when they can come back and start digging all of the this or the new foundations they have to have the inspection check the soil and basically advise the appropriate methods but that will come out as well that big tree they'll need to dig out this is another hole at the front of the property that they've dug out they've obviously just put these boards over just to make sure no one or nothing falls down them this is the front of our property and you can see the edge of the sort of front of the house there steps up into the front door so this is what the side of our house now looks like which obviously we used to have the extension here that has been removed boarded up ready for um the new foundations to be dug out steel will be put in full length so that the front half of the building will be garage with steps up into the house and then the back half will all be the kind of open plan kitchen pantry living area what we currently have here this space the old extension came up to here we're going to be going as far as possible with the regulations i believe we need a bins width so so long as you can get a wheelie bin down here you're okay so that's why we're going to go out as far as we can and use the maximum amount of space that we can get with this um neighbor not having sort of windows there or anything we're going to obviously refence and remove all that ivy and everything refence the entire garden because as you can see we're missing panels and everything thanks to storm eunice it wasn't the best job initially hence why the um structural engineer recommended that we move this anyway regardless of whether or not we were extending the property because this was kind of affecting like the weight of this which wasn't properly supported was affecting the um top part here and the wall slightly bowing so yeah it needed to come down which obviously our plans were to do that anyway i do feel very grateful that we're doing all the works in the summer months because it's going to be a little bit crazy a little bit hectic over these next few months but big changes big progress to be made and honestly just like being out here without this extension makes you realize the sort of the size of the property the people we bought it from um the husband came over and said hello to us yesterday and it was so lovely to see him and show him a bit of a progress we keep in touch with them and yeah it, it's just it's still exciting for us to see the potential of what this property is gonna become whilst in the same breath it being a little bit hectic in the meantime as for the sort of garden area we have had thoughts on what we're going to do externally with this shed initially it's great for storage and especially for sort of like any building supplies building materials the builders have been keeping their things nice and dry and sheltered with that um, but eventually obviously that is going to come down we're going to essentially move it back we'll have to do that with the extension coming out and then steps down into that room there so this the extension will come out quite far then with steps down because obviously if you can see ground level is actually quite high anyway this is going to this instead of being here is going to be more in that corner with a potential l shape we're not sure yet but some kind of outdoor kitchen area over here so once all of this area is cleared out we'll keep these big trees that corner tree is rotting so that can go and then we've still undecided really on the uh, garden we'll have an architect and uh, some drawings properly done but we're thinking potentially sort of composite black fencing along all the borders with maybe sleepers with flowers and then maybe even another seating area over here maybe even like a hot tub area i mean there's even potential you know for like an outbuilding at the bottom to have it as a kind of outdoor office whether or not we'll do that i don't know because i do quite like having this big garden space especially for barney to have a good run around and who knows maybe even a barney brother one day in the future fur baby not human we're not planning on kids anytime soon but anyway i'll be back 
tomorrow once those doors are open so I can show you down in the dungeon. Yay! Oh god, he's gonna go crazy. <laughs> It's like one big sandpit. <laughs> so into the chamber rooms now. This one is still to be dug out using this digger, which only really fits in the back room. The guys have been hand digging out the other chambers, bringing the soil back to this room for the digger to then remove it. You can see here from Tom and Sam's height, they're about six foot four. So that's how much headroom height we have gained just by digging down. And of course, by underpinning the property. So it's gonna have a headroom height of about 2.5 meters, which is gonna feel so refreshing and really make it feel less like a basement. So that is all my progress updates to date. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Thank you again to AirUp for very kindly sponsoring it. Don't forget to Check it out via the link in my description box. It's honestly amazing, well worth trying out. Thank you so much to each and every one of you for following along the renovation journey. I hope you guys are enjoying it and I hope to see you all very, very soon in the next one. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.